Thank you and hello. My name is Nikita and my last name is Javoronkov. It's impossible to pronounce, so I come from Russia. And I'm developing blockchain and if you use Bitcoin Cash and since you're... Oh, one second. So is it... So let's try it once again. Uh, I'm developing blockchain and if you use Bitcoin Cash and there is a high chance you're using Bitcoin Cash because you're all here at this conference, uh, you have most probably heard about blockchain um, because blockchain is the most popular and most widely used Bitcoin Cash explorer out there. Uh, we are trying to stay as innovative as the Bitcoin Cash developers, the Bitcoin Cash community. We are trying to bring new features to our platform as fast as Bitcoin Cash developers bring them to the Bitcoin Cash code base. Well, for example, we were the first uh, Bitcoin Cash Explorer to implement the new cash address format. Yay. And thank you, Jason. Uh, and yesterday, the, uh, here were a talk about uh, the uh, op group proposal, and I guess and I hope we will be the first uh, Bitcoin Cash Explorer to support native uh, colored tokens on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain as well. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we launched our Bitcoin Cash Explorer just the day before the fork happened. Uh, so we have gathered uh, a huge amount of data and I would like to share some statistics on Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash today with you. Well, of course, we have a Bitcoin Explorer also. And, well, the title is Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash, but you can call it Bitcoin versus Bitcoin, Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin. Well, pick whatever you like. Uh, so let's start with the technical differences. Well, uh, it's not the stats, but that what influences stats. Uh, the most known and one of the most important differences is the block size limit. Well, the block size limit is the reason uh, Bitcoin Cash was born. Uh, right now in Bitcoin, we still have one megabyte block size limit for stripped block size. Uh, since SegWit got activated, they changed the concept of block size to the block weight, and now they have uh, a limit of four megabyte units so-called weight units. And, but effectively, uh, the block size in Bitcoin uh, is still uh, limited up to 1.2 or 1.3 megabytes. Well, in Bitcoin Cash, this limit is 32 megabytes. Well, right now it's soft limited to eight megabytes. And just like Omri said, it will be lifted in the next update. And that difference uh, results in that the fact that transaction throughput is higher, for, is larger for, for Bitcoin Cash. So these two cryptocurrencies have uh, different use cases. Uh, the second difference is, uh, the difference is uh, difficulty adjustment algorithms. Well, in Bitcoin, the difficulty readjusts once in 2016 blocks, while in Bitcoin Cash, that happens every block. Well, that leads to the fact that there are two different security models and two different emission curves. Well, because when miners found, find new blocks, they include a transaction to mint new Bitcoins there. Uh, and the third uh, difference uh, is support for segregated witness. It's, uh, well, obviously it's supported in Bitcoin uh, and it's not uh, in Bitcoin Cash, but once again, uh, the Bitcoin Cash developers uh, have some clever proposals uh, to fix malleability bug in Bitcoin Cash in a more convenient way, uh, using a hard fork <coughs> instead of soft fork. Uh, and I, I hope that will be done too. So uh, let's get to the transaction throughput. Uh, the most common transaction consists of, consists of two outputs. Uh, well, the first output is for the recipient of transaction. Uh, where he gets his money for whatever, for a product. Uh, and the second output is for the sender himself, where he puts the change. And we calculated for that for such transaction with, uh, transaction with 
two outputs, the average input count is also true. <coughs> so we have two inputs, two outputs, and that is uh, 386 bytes of data. Well, that means that one megabyte gives us uh, only, uh, gives us possibility to include only 2,600 transactions in it. So given that blocks are issued only once in 10 minutes, that one megabyte limits us to uh, approximately four transactions, four basic transactions per second. So if we compare that to 32 megabytes, well, uh, 32 megabytes give us 138 transactions per second. Well, if we compare uh, the Bitcoin architecture, the architecture of Bitcoin blockchain to, for example, Visa, uh, Visa can process uh, 24,000 transactions at peak, well, for example, at the Christmas Eve, when everybody is buying gifts, cookies, uh, whatever. And uh, in order to have the same throughput in uh, Bitcoin, uh, we would need 5.5 gigabyte blocks. Well, as it, has been sta it was stated yesterday, uh, there will be no problem to support one terabyte blocks uh, in Bitcoin Cash in the future. So this is not uh, as much as it seems. So, but in practice, we see uh, other figures. Well, for uh, the orange line is for Bitcoin and the green line is for Bitcoin Cash. Well, uh, the current transaction throughput, uh, not the throughput, but the usage is uh, three to four transactions per second. But for Bitcoin Cash, it's uh, under one transaction per second. One transaction per second. Why is that? Well, uh, despite it uh, recently, BitPay announced that they support Bitcoin Cash. Well, there isn't that much users uh, in Bitcoin Cash that as in Bitcoin. Uh, if we look at the blockchain saturation, we can see that uh, blocks in Bitcoin are constantly full. The blockchain is clogged, so. 99% of the block space is constantly full with transactions. And that's not uh, the case for Bitcoin Cash. Uh, well, Bitcoin Cash has only 1% saturation. And actually, this is a very good thing because it gives us a room for new use cases, new products, new startups, which can fill this place. Uh, and in my opinion, it will be a good idea if uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, saturation, Bitcoin Cash blockchain saturation ever increases to like 20 or 30 percent uh, to increase the block size limit once again uh, to adapt new use cases. So, uh, and we have two remarks here, two small remarks. Well, first of all, that the difficulty adjustment algorithm also affects the average time between blocks, thus the throughput. And uh, I will have a slide about SegWit adoption uh, in Bitcoin a little bit later. So uh, because the hash rate in Bitcoin is constantly increasing and the difficulty adjusts only once in approximately two weeks, Bitcoin miners find blocks more frequently than the target 10 minutes. So that leads to the fact that the real uh, uh, throughput limit is 20% uh, more than theoretical, well, I'll outlined just before. So far, the Bitcoin blockchain, well, at, at least before SegWit, uh, has been increasing not for one megabyte uh, each 10 minutes, but 1.2 megabyte. Well, so when Luke Dash Jr. says that let's try to increase the block size to 1.1 megabyte, well, we already have that. Uh, let's say at the block count uh, for both blockchains, once again, Bitcoin is orange, Bitcoin Cash is green. Uh, at this slide, we can see on the left side that the chart for, for Bitcoin Cash is quite wobbling. Well, that because, that's because uh, Bitcoin Cash actually had two different uh, adjustments, adjustment algorithms, and the first one was quite buggy. It was replaced by, the, by a new one. And now uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, shows us that it is closer to the expected number of blocks per day, which is 144, than Bitcoin. So in that matter, uh, Bitcoin Cash works better than Bitcoin. So, uh, and here is the emission curves for two cryptocurrencies. 
as we can see once again on the left side, the chart for Bitcoin Cash is wobbling. Uh, but right now, the uh, emission for um, Bitcoin Cash is lower than for Bitcoin. And somewhere in the distant future, these two lines will intersect. Uh, but there is a reverse side to the coin uh, because hash rate may not only increase but also decrease, for example, due, uh, due to a huge price drop. And that would lead to uh, the decrease of throughput. Well, a possible scenario here is a downward spiral. Well, the price drops, the hash rate drops, the throughput decreases until the next readjustment in two weeks. Uh, fees skyrocket, as we have already witnessed this many, many, many times. And the markets begin to panic. Well, I guess everyone here uh, saw, ha have seen uh, threads on various Bitcoin forums. Well, my transaction is stuck. The exchange trying to rob me. Bitcoin is not, wor is not working. So the price drops even more because of the panic. Hash rate drops even more. And we have a negative loop here. So it's... Uh, a bad thing for Bitcoin. Uh, and let's get back to segregated witness for a moment. Uh, here we can see the uh, adoption rate a chart for uh, SegWit in Bitcoin. Right now the adoption is nearly uh, 30 percent. And here we can see the difference between uh, soft forking approach uh, to changes uh, uh, and hard forking. Well, SegWit is here in Bitcoin for over half a year. And if uh, SegWit were implemented as a hard fork, it would instantly have 100% adoption. So once again, this is why Bitcoin Cash better uh, than Bitcoin, because uh, changes are implemented uh, quicker. Uh, and let's get back to the difficulty uh, for a moment. And here we go, are going to out outline a problem for Bitcoin Cash this time. Well, everyone knows that Bitcoin's hash rate is much higher than that of Bitcoin Cash. And that leaves Bitcoin Cash vulnerable to, uh, well, of course, it's hypothetical, but uh, it's also real. 51% uh, attack from Bitcoin miners. And let's see what percentage of the current Bitcoin miners is needed to attack Bitcoin Cash. Well, it's just 11% of Bitcoin miners. And that's quite a low figure uh, because uh, four different Bitcoin mining pools have at least 11% of the entire hash rate in Bitcoin each. That would be btc.com, which has 25%, uh, and pool 16%, slash pool, uh, 12% and via BTC 11%. So if any of these pool, pools uh, or just a huge solo miner decides to go rogue for any reason, well, Bitcoin Cash is in trouble. Uh, now let's get back to simpler stats. Well, here we see can see the number of transactions. Uh, Bitcoin processes uh, approximately 1.2 million transactions weekly. And uh, this number for Bitcoin Cash is just 0 0.2 million. Uh, and we can also see here that uh, there are more SegWit transactions in Bitcoin than uh, transactions in Bitcoin Cash. Uh, now let's take a look at the money turnover in means of United States dollars. The Bitcoin, cash net, uh, the, the Bitcoin network processes uh, approximately $100 billion uh, weekly, while the same number for Bitcoin Cash is $7 billion. And here we can note, notice that uh, the price of Bitcoin Cash is approximately the same 10 times lower, lower than that of Bitcoin. Uh, the next metric is uh, a little bit uh, more complicated, it's called coin days destroyed. Well, coin days destroyed is calculated by multiplying the amount of coins in a, transactions, in a transaction by the number of days it has been since these coins were last spent. Well, for example, if I received two bitcoins uh, three days ago, well, two multi multiply three, that would be six uh, days, uh, coin days I would destroy if I send uh, this transaction. Well, and uh, this metric is the 
almost the same for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So uh, if we uh, speak about coin uh, turnover, it's the same for the two coins. Uh, now let's get to the average fees. It's one of the most interesting, interesting metrics well, because uh, low, low fees is one of the main selling points for Bitcoin Cash. And we can see uh, when the recent uh, ride uh, happened, uh, Bitcoin fees were as high as $45 per transaction in average. Well, at this time, I tried to uh, purchase domain names, uh, web hosting, and I was given an option to pay with uh, either Bitcoin or uh, Bitcoin uh, or uh, PayPal. And despite I consider myself a huge Bitcoin user, I had to pay with PayPal uh, because, well, it's quite stupid to pay $50 in fees uh, to buy a $10.com uh, domain name. So, and the same uh, number for Bitcoin Cash uh, is, well, it, it will better look on this slide, is uh, much lower. But you, you can ask me here, uh, if Nikita, if you just told us that uh, the saturation for Bitcoin Cash blockchain is almost non-existent, why the fees for Bitcoin Cash are as high as 40 cents per transaction? Well, at least they were. Uh, a couple of months ago. Well, that's because uh, most Bitcoin Cash wallets uh, still, still use uh, fee estimation uh, algorithms uh, from Bitcoin software. And these algorithms were um, architectured uh, with the thought that uh, the blockchain is constantly clogged, which is not the case for Bitcoin Cash. So those users uh, of Bitcoin Cash who decided to set uh, fees manually instead of relying on an algorithm, well, they uh, get into the Bitcoin Cash blockchain just for one cent or less. Well, let's dig a little uh, deeper uh, and compare median fees. Well, the median fee from, for Bitcoin Cash, as you can see here, is lower than the average. Uh, it's, right now, it's just half a cent. So 50% of all transactions in, which happen on uh, Bitcoin Cash pay less than half a cent. Uh, and if we dip even deeper to the 10th percentile fees, well, what's 10th percentile? It's, well, for, for example, in Bitcoin, it was $14. It, that means that 10% of transactions paid less than $14, and the other 90% uh, paid more. Well, for Bitcoin Cash, that is just one-tenth of a cent. So that means that you can include a transaction in the Bitcoin Cash blockchain for as low as uh, one-tenth of a cent. And you can do this right now. You can try, well, if you were buying cookies uh, out there, I guess you uh, maybe you should try to uh, low, lower your transaction fee. And my last metric would be uh, the average transaction amount. Uh, this is almost the same for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. And once again, we'll try to uh, deep, uh, dig a, a little deeper. Uh, the median is once again the same, uh, but at the 10th percentile, we start to see the difference here between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Uh, so as you can see, 10% uh, of all transaction, uh, or transactions which happen on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain are less than $1 in amount. And if we switch to first percentile, we can see that 1% of all transactions are less, uh, for less than 10 cents. And that's not the case for Bitcoin because of these enormous fees. Uh, and this is why Bitcoin Cash, uh, well, r it, it is right now open uh, many new possibilities. Well, right, like uh, tipping on Reddit, liking posts on the Yours network, which is not currently possible on the Bitcoin blockchain. And as you can see, it is used right now. So the Bitcoin, ca Bitcoin Cash is not about future, it's about now. Everyone can use it now to innovate. 
So uh, I believe that Bitcoin Cash, uh, maybe it has its own problems, well, like Bitcoin, but Bitcoin has, ha Cash has a bright future and it most certainly closer to the original Satoshi's vision than Bitcoin. Thank you. My contacts are on the slide. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita. All right. Well, I would be glad to answer your questions if you can. Yep, we have time for a few quick questions. Here you go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Great presentation. I actually like your website. I, I, I was you. using it for Bitcoin stuff before I got into Bitcoin Cash. It was so amazing. But uh, I have a question. I'm still uh, kind of really thinking about this RBF stuff. Do you see any transactions that are chosen by miners that are not the first transaction? Yes, uh, it happens. In, in Bitcoin at, Cash? Well, in Bitcoin Cash? In Bitcoin Cash, no. Well, but that happens a lot in Bitcoin. Yeah, but in Bitcoin Cash, no. you never see any transactions that are well, chosen by miners we, we who use a different code? We didn't specifically analyze that, but uh, we didn't see that. Also. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And do you see any zero-fee transactions? Yes, yes. There are a lot of zero-fee transactions on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. Well, that sometimes is the case for Bitcoin. You can filter, using blockchain, you can filter transactions by fees, and you can just input zero and to, f to find all the transactions with zero fees and calculate the amount of such transactions. May I ask one more? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, sorry, I, just, I really like what you did. And, uh, just one more. Um, I'm kind of worried about the altruism part of uh, Bitcoin Cash, that uh, they're expecting miners to not change the code and use the official code and not look for high fees. So if, if the first transactions are chosen, like, couldn't somebody make a transaction with a really low fee and then, you know, you have a zero conf transaction go buy a cookie and it never actually gets uh, mined? Like, isn't that a problem? Well, uh, the first thing is, I, I, I believe that miners are quite lazy. They are using, uh, most of them are using just default settings. So okay. it's up to developers uh, at this point. And I believe that Bitcoin Cash developers has great ideas about how to do this. So uh, z uh, um, zero confirmation transactions are really a thing, Okay, C secure what? thing. Mm -hmm. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, I got one in the back. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, big fan of the uh, website. The uh, metrics are really, really important. What, in your view, is the most important metric for the survival and success of a blockchain? Well, and believe... if there isn't a single one, could you combine them in a certain way to come up with a formula for that? Well, I, I believe it's user adoption. Well, and, and you can put it in a formula. So, well, it's the natural process which either happens or it doesn't happen. All right. With that, let's go to coffee and give Nikita a good send-off. Thank you very much, Nikita.